Hi, and welcome to Strut and Bellow Shout Out Friday. I'm Melanie Clark Pullen, and you're very welcome. Um, you might be able to hear some music playing in the background. Um, it is the fabulous new album from Angela Josephine, who was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Uh, today is her launch day. Daylight is coming. So Daylight is the name of the new album. She's going to be going live over in the States um, quite short, in a short time to uh, share the daylight, I guess, the sunrise in um, Michigan. And um, you can get her new album at uh, AngelaJosephine.com and uh, it's gorgeous and the videos that she's made are just stunning a couple of them were made here in northern ireland actually and um, she has an instrumental she plays the dulcet ham ha um, dulcet ham hammer, hammer, hammer dulcimer i have no idea what it's called sorry sorry angela um and uh, there's this incredible video that they had that she made here of her playing it on the top of the cliff and it's just spectacular um so dramatic and the music is so stunning as well so really worth checking out uh angelajosephine.com and if you want to hear more about how the album came to be check out our um podcast chat that we had together uh, we recorded it back in um, october of last year but uh, it's on the podcast so if you go to itunes and start and follow the podcast you'll find um, our chat there so, how are you? It's been a couple of weeks. Last week I had laryngitis and general exhaustion and uh, children off and all kinds of mad stuff. Um, today I am good. I'm in good form. Um, we, are, we have had two weeks now since the last show of the Vagina Monologues at the Black Box, which was an amazing experience, really, really meaningful, and I wrote about that on the blog. Um, and on the 1st and 2nd of June, we are back in the Lyric in Belfast, the Lyric Theatre, the Norton Studio at the Lyric Theatre in Belfast, uh, which is really exciting. And we've got two nights. So book your tickets because the last two shows sold out. And uh, we really want to make sure as many, uh, as many can get to see it because um, it might not, might be the last time you get to see it because it, it, the, the logistics of getting a cast of 12 women together in one place for rehearsals and everything is challenging and fair dues shout out to all the cast and the crew of the show who have given their time for free and have put it together and have turned up and done the rehearsals and shown up and shone um, twice now and really made a huge impact and these women are incredible. Sadly, a couple of our cast are not available in June due to previous um, uh, engagements. So we are actually recasting and um, we're gonna have a couple more, uh, which is which is really exciting as well. So it'll it'll be a chance for our um for more people to um to be part of the amazing energy that we create in the room. So um uh, when those when that cast will be announced very soon. Um, and we're going to be figuring out how best to get the word out about this show because we really want to sell out. I mean, I don't think it's that difficult. There, there's a hunger for this kind of work. There's a hunger for the authenticity and the transparency and the honesty and brutal honesty, you know, that the play really kind of shares about uh, women's experiences. And um, just at this time, specifically in Ireland, uh, more particularly down south with all of the conversations around the Eighth Amendment and the referendum that's happening on the 25th. It's a really important time to just lift the lid off the uh, uh, things that, that are not talked about and not, uh, not shared. You know, the time for silence is over. The time for darkness is over. We need to step out and, and step up and tell the truth about our experiences. And uh, that's what um, that's what Vagina Monologues is all about. Um, so if you want tickets to the Vagina Monologues, go to the Lyric box office, uh, lyrictheatre.co.uk and uh, check out their, um, 
check out their, uh, the, the, the tickets there. If you are part of a group in Northern Ireland, women's group, um, come together, come have a girls' night out in Belfast on the first or the second. It's a Friday night and a Saturday night. If you're part of a group, um, come along. Uh, we're gonna be doing post-show discussions, so come along with your own stories, your own, um, uh, your own take, your own stuff to input into the conversations. Uh, come along and, and let's make these some really special, fun, engaging, truthful nights at the Lyric. Um, and where else are you gonna get to see 12 amazing female actresses on the stage together. It's so rare, guys. It's so rare. So so book your tickets. Don't miss out. It's going to be a terrific couple of nights. A couple of other shout outs that I want to give today. So we've talked about, I'm looking at my notes here, talking about Angela's album is out today, Daylight. Um, also today, in if you're in Bray, in County Wicklow, my old hometown, at the Signal Arts Centre, Karen Hickey is launching her fabulous uh, solo exhibition, Clothed. I love these paintings. All, my, all these links are gonna be on um, on the website, but also on on the Facebook page later, so I'll put them up there. But um, Karen Hickey's work is just gorgeous. She's created these beautiful portraits, uh, quirky and um, sort of uh, brightly colored. Uh, you Just go check out her website, and if you're in Bray, Call into the Signal Arts. It's launching tonight, but call into the Signal Arts over the next week or so and, and check out her paintings because they are really stunning. And I think a couple of them have been sold already, which is really great and I'm really delighted for Karen. The other artist who I'm really excited to share with you, Isabelle Gabory. She is a French artist living in the west of Ireland and her, her art is encaustic art. Now, I know very little about this. Isabelle is fantastic at doing live demonstrations and everything, but her company is called Wildfire and Wax. She creates art using a blowtorch and wax and color, and the result is spectacular. And Isabel has uh, is part of a group exhibition down in Galway, and the launching tonight um, at the uh, Secret Garden Gallery in Kinvara in Galway. And Isabel is part of a group called Us the Studio now, out of the studios, I guess the Irish language one, um, and. Her work is stunning, and most recently, she's been making these incredible 3D um, shapes using uh, wax and heat and fire and everything, and they're just spectacular. So it's really well worth um, checking out Isabel's uh, encaustic artwork. It's really quite, something quite special, um, and you can check her stuff out on, uh, on her website, Wildfire and Wax, and I'll set, put up a link to that as well. And also Lorna Watkins is another artist I really love. You see, one of the reasons I'm plugging all these amazing artists is that I'm hoping at some point I'll earn enough money or I'll be gifted with some of their art because I just want it all over my walls. Uh, Lorna, I love her stuff as well. Again, the colors are just so vibrant and uplifting and wonderful. And Lorna does great workshops too. So. Um, She's going to be at the High Bridge Gallery in Sligo from June 26th, which is still a little way off. And her um, uh, uh, thing is called, her exhibition is called Heartfelt, so it's worth checking out her stuff as well. Again, all the links will be on the website later. And uh, I also just want to give a shout out to a woman I've met recently called Mel Wiggins, who um, it has, Part of her time she gives to a small um, non-profit um, uh, which is sort of involved in the issue of human trafficking and um, and helping people who have been trafficked uh, here in, in Northern Ireland. And the other part of her work is a very similar track to to, my, to me and, and it's, it's really amazing to find somebody who's, who's wants the same thing as building female creatives, uh, building up female creatives. Um, uh, Mel has formed this amazing community called Assembly Gatherings, uh, which uh, happen quarterly, I think, the, just a gathering together over a meal of women who create and work and in the creative arts. 
and um, I've been to one of these gatherings and it's really, it's a very special environment to be in. And one of the things that uh, Mel did at the last one was talk about um, uh, your inner critic. And uh, she, she gave, did a live call this week uh, with a group of us um, and talked about it, went through that kind of, all that, that stuff again. And, and it was really interesting this week um, dealing with, um, well, just to be confronted with that whole inner critic thing and how that manifests in your life and in my life particularly at the minute. You know, I'm stretching out into new places that I didn't see coming. Um, and I'm, my vision for Strut and Bellow, for what I wanted to be, who I wanted to serve, um, is, is just expanding and expanding. And as women, I think we find ourselves often um, sort of shrinking away from expansion and backing off from uh, from sort of going, taking that next step into growth and uh, the, the bigger picture. Because um, we all, and men and women, have that sense in us of, well, who am I to move forward? Who am I to be big, uh, Marianne Williamson is, that, is, quote, is uh, credited with that amazing quote of, um, you know, where it's a, uh, oh, I wish I had it, up, I, I should have written it down. Um, you know, who am I to be uh, big, bright, beautiful? And her response is, who are you not to be? And I think we find it so hard to, uh, to step into growth and expansion and um, a bigger vision and often it is that inner critic inside that says you know who are you to do this who are you to to step out to be big to be seen um, and it's it's time all i'm finding now it's time to just tell that inner critic to with respect and gentleness shut the hell up um, one thing that Mel pointed out, which I found really helpful, is that the inner critic, the, the voice that says you shouldn't, you can't, you, you mustn't, it, all that is doing is trying to protect you. You know, when you're, when you're branching out into something you need, you know, of course, if we, if we didn't have any kind of uh, checks and balances, then we'd run across the road into traffic. Of course, there's something within us that wants to protect us from harm. But in the creative life, uh, risk and vulnerability and exposure is just part of it. And fear is fear is going to be there, but fear doesn't need to drive the car. And um, the inner critic wants to protect, wants to prevent us from being hurt, from being rejected but it's the thing that holds us back it will it will protect us from being hurt we will you know if we don't step into our growth and our expansion and our bigness if we don't step into that then we won't hurt we won't be rejected we will stay safe but our truth and the gift that we have to give to the world will stay hidden and something that Elizabeth Gilbert says is that creativity that is not expressed metastasizes. It turns inwards. Things that are not, that are suppressed and repressed and kept inside turn bad. So whether that becomes uh, passive aggression uh, against somebody else or active aggression against yourself or somebody else, eventually it'll harm us if we don't allow our creativity to come out, if we don't step forward and if we're not vulnerable. So you're kind of caught between two stones. Sure, if you step out, if you step up, if you put yourself out there, yes, you risk being rejected, being hurt, 
um, being told who you think you are, being shouted at, being laughed at, being dismissed, even worse. But if you don't step up, you risk something going in and metastasizing and manifesting in a negative way. For me, <laughs> um, it was really interesting. I found it this week. I, I, my stepping up and stepping into my bigness and my expansion is is trying to manage putting on two shows at the Lyric Theatre in June, um, and the the responsibility of that and the the adult thing of that of being the big person and pulling up my big girl pants and and making it happen and my temptation when i'm feeling like it, it's 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 all a bit too grown up for me is to just back off and um distract myself and my mouth um and 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 tell myself that really what i need is to eat half a tub of ice cream and binge watch netflix because that's that's what i need to feel better and sure i will feel better for all of 10 minutes but the work doesn't get done and i am more likely to let people down if i don't do the work so what i have learned over over the years and over and particularly over this last few months is the thing to do when you're feeling too frightened by the big thing is to just do the next thing. Um, if you're standing on a, on a beach and you're looking out at the sea, the sea looks huge and expansive and overwhelming and huge. But if you look down at the shore, all you see is the waves coming in on the beach. And that actually looks quite fun. So it's just about doing the next thing. The big picture can be overwhelming. And stepping into your power and into your truth and into your bigness can be frightening. But you don't need to do it all at once. Just do the next thing. Just make the next call. Write the next line. Draw the next picture. Um, reach out to the next person. Uh, put your next song up on uh, up on YouTube and um, just the next thing break it down make it manageable and yes it could all crash and burn and yes people get upset with you but you know what I've learned is that you know I've made mistakes and I've had to own up to mistakes due to my own experience and due to my own lack of organization but you know what um do you know what i didn't die and um, i remember on one occasion a number of years back i'd made a short film and i had mistakenly left a very important person of the credits and the film had gone to print and um i had to go to this person and apologize and say i have done this now everything had to have that print could no longer be used we had to reprint which was costly costly it was it was a huge deal and the person that i had uh, i was dealing with was so angry and actually unfairly made the conversation incredibly personal and this person attacked me personally over the phone and um, literally said, who are you to think you can be doing this? Um, criticized my film, criticized my, uh, criticized me, criticized all the people involved with it, criticized my, uh, said I shouldn't have ever done it and I should never have got funding. It was horrific. And I had to sit and I had to take that person's uh, anger because I had made a mistake. I had done something wrong and I had had to own up to that and that person was really angry and I had to take that and I could take that 
And I had worried about that call for 48 hours beforehand. It was a horrible call to have to make. It was a horrible uh, mistake to have to admit that I'd done. I made it right. And, um, and I apologized and I took all of the crap that this person felt the need to give me. And I didn't die. It was nasty. It was not a nice experience. But no one died. And you know what? We are not heart surgeons. <laughs> I'm watching a lot of Grey's Anatomy while I'm doing the ironing some of these evenings. And, um, you know, people, heart surgeons literally have saved lives. It is all life and death in, in medical uh, medical circles it's very rarely life or death and um, when we're creating something and when we're, we're working on something in the creative fields but it can feel like death if we don't put ourselves out there if we don't step up a little part of us dies and a little part of our light goes out and that it's just not it's not that's not good. It's not worth that. So today, what are you going to do to step up and step out into the daylight? Angela talked on her our podcast about how um, she she just did the next thing. She, she put it out there. She just asked. And here she is on launch day with this stunning album. And these beautiful tracks and this, these incredible videos and it's it's really she is testament to that that the faith to stand up and be counted and step into the big vision and I really encourage you to do that this weekend so that's me um, stand up and be counted um, I am really excited to be meeting with my girls tomorrow morning. Um, we're getting together, the Vagina Monologues girls. Uh, we're getting rehearsals sorted over the next couple of weeks. I feel so, uh, so blessed to have been part of this journey for this play and these, and these women. Um, so come see us step up and step into the light um, on June the 1st and June the 2nd and get your tickets at the Lyric Box Office and don't forget to check out Angela Josephine's beautiful new album on her website all the links will be up in the next half hour so in the meantime keep scrapping and bellowing see you